ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय व्यासन वीक्ष तत्षा विषयात्मा सुदाशन स्वास्त्रेण स्वान रक्षा यदा विभो सन वीक्ष तत्षयात्मा सुदाशन स्वास्त्रेण स्वान रक्षा यदाभु व्यासन ग्रेट डेंजर दीक्षा हैविंग अब्जर्व वेर अन्य नो अदर विषयो मीन्स आत्मा दस इंक्वाइन सुदाशन by the wheel of shri krishna by the wheel of shri krishna swa astrena swa astrena by the weapon spanam his own devotees raksham protection gadha did it vibhu the almighty translation The almighty personality of God at Sri Krishna having observed that a great danger was befalling his unalloyed devotees who were fully surrendered souls at once took up his sudarshan of this to protect them purport the brahmastra the supreme weapon released by ashvatthama was something similar to the nuclear weapon but with more radiation and heat This brahmastra is the product of a more subtle science being the product of a finer sound a ma- a mantra recorded in the Vedas Another advantage of this weapon is it is not blind like the nuclear weapon because it can be directed only to the target nothing else 
Aswatthama released the weapon just to finish all the male members of Pandu's family. Therefore, in one sense, it was more dangerous than the atomic bombs because it could penetrate even the most protected place and would never miss a target. Knowing all this, Lord Sri Krishna at once took up his personal weapon to protect his devotees who did not know anyone other than Krishna. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord has clearly promised that his devotees are never to be vanquished, and he behaves according to the quality or degree of the devotional service rendered by the devotees. Here the word Ananya Vishayat Manam is significant. The Pandavas were 100% dependent on the protection of the Lord, although they were all great warriors themselves. But the Lord neglects even the greatest warriors and also vanquishes them in no time. When the Lord saw there was no time for the Pandavas to counteract the Brahmastra of Ashtatama, he took up his weapon even at the risk of breaking his own vow. Although the battle of Kukshetra was almost finished, still, according to his vow, he should not have taken up his own weapon. But the emergency was more important than the vow. He is better known as the Bhaktivatsala or the lover of the devotee, and thus he preferred to continue as Bhaktivatsala than to be a worldly moralist who never breaks his solemn vow. Chitetanyamanabhishtantapidam <laughs> Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Virara Shri Vasudi Go Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Dasanam Bhiksha Tattesham Ananya Vishayatmanam Sudarjanena Sastrena Svastrena Svanam Raksham Vyadhar Vibhu the Almighty Personality of God, Sri Krishna, having observed that a great danger was befalling his unloyed devotees, who were fully surrendered souls, at once took up his Sudarshan disc to protect them. So, Marj Parikid in the womb here, Vishnu Rata, he got a name, Vishnu Rata, which is used in the Bhagavatam. Vishnu Rata, he is protected by Vishnu in the womb. So, even, not even, but Maharaj Parikit is the main recipient of the Bhagavatam. So from the very beginning, the, this weapon, which is this material energy, just aimed directly at him, was out to get him, more or less. So throughout the Bhagavatam, we're reading in the first canto, Later on, Marge Prickett is cursed. He's cursed, but the way he takes the curse is the main, one of the main lessons here in the Bhagavatam. He gave up everything. Although he was a very opulent king after it was predicted, uh, he gave up all, although he was the shelter of all living entities um, throughout the kingdom, throughout the world, but having been cursed, it's described uh, by Samika Rishi, Taraskrita Vipralabdha. He was glorifying Maharaj Pariksit that uh, Vipralabdha Taraskrita, whether uh, he's giving these qualifications of such a great devotee, Ananya, Ananya Vishyatma, Ananya means there's no other anyabilashita shunyam gana karmada nabita. This is a motto, slogan that Rupa Goswami has given. Sometimes that probably used this word slogan. Sounds like sloka. He also said, so we have certain important things, so this is one of them. That the devotees are ananya sata, ananya sata tam, jeta sata tam. So Maharaj Pariket being glorified by uh, now this 
Samiko Rishi, who was chastising his son and saying, why did you do such a horrible thing? The king is such a great person and you cursed, cursed him like that. But nevertheless, he's describing his qualification. Even if a devotee like Maharaj Parikit is cursed, kshipta, uh, shapta means cursed, or neglected, cursed, beaten, or even killed, he never doesn't protest. So this is something very high standard. It's easy to forget reading every day, but if you go back and read so many things about Maharaj Parikshit, Prabhavopi, uh, Nati Korvanti, he doesn't, Prati uh, Korvanti, he doesn't uh, try to counteract. So means that there is some counteracting going here, but it's by Vishnu, the mercy, by his own mercy, the uh, those who are not on the level of Maharaj Pariksha, they try to counteract. Uh, they're baffled at every step. This is the highest level of Krishna conscious. Ananya sohrado. Uh, ananya. There's no other desire. Anya bilashita shunyam. Gana karmara. Krishna nushiladam. This is complete, positive, forward, progressive. Prabhupada describes it in so many ways. In another part of the Bhagavatam, in the third canto of 31, we can read about the predicament of the child in the womb also. Movement of the fruit of uh, the living entities, it's called. And in there, described, in the beginning, Karmana Daivana Itrena Jantu Deho is being described by Kapila Dev. But not only Maharaj Parikit, but every living entity either enters the womb or enters into an egg, there's extreme suffering described. Nobody can describe like better than Bhagavatam. How that baby is in the womb, he's bent oh, and after Striya Bhavishta Udaram means uh, Kanashraya. The living entity, the jiva, the unfortunate jiva, he's put into the womb and he's suffering all kinds. Besides, he's protected, Maharaj Parikit, but he's very fortunate. But described there by Kapila Dev that any baby, fortunate baby, Prabhupada said fortunate baby, not all baby, but by some uh, Daivane Trena, someone may become fortunate. And it says there that he can remember uh, Shatta, 100 births before. If you read that, uh, third canto, 31st chapter. How the baby in the womb is suffering. Sodara means that there are many worms who, in Udara is the womb. And so these creamy, these worms, and they're biting, and he's put into the abdomen. Gradually he expands, very scientific actually, considering this is a very ancient primitive scripture. There is described by Kapila Day that after the first night, there's a mixture of the ovum, the words are used, and the semen, they're mixed. In Western science, I think they didn't know this till three, 300 years back, or maybe they knew something. Just, you can read that. But here it's thousands of years old. They, you know, after the fifth uh, night, fifth night, or then there's some formation there, like a little egg or something. And, uh, or a plum after the tenth night, and gradually after one month, their head, even they can see the head is forming. How would they know that? They didn't have x rays or any kind of, uh, what do they call it, sound uh, okay. to figure that out. I mean, come on, this is something amazing. So, how can they, uh, how would they know that? So, they know that they knew then, Bhagavatam is describing it. And after two months, the arms and after three months, more detail is there, the fingernail and eyelid is showing and different things. So this is the Srimad Bhagavatam is such an amazing thing. And then the baby, if he's fortunate, he can remember these hundred births, although he's being bitten, he's in, in the, sometimes, of course, in strict Vedic terms, the, there would be Garbhadhan sam, Samskara and uh, would be very, try to minimize the suffering of the baby. Nowadays, forget it, Kali Yuga. 
But even then, if they're even eating some hot, without even eating chilies and a punch in food, what to speak of meat, everything churning hot in the belly, the babies are suffering. Uh, therefore, twice in Bhagavatam, in Bhagavad Gita is mentioned, Janman Ritu, Jarabhyadhi, Dukkha Doshana Darshana, one should always keep in front of him, Darshana, uh, that these things are going on in the material world. Bhairagya Kena. The whole, uh, begin, from beginning, middle, and end, Bhagavatam is simply meant for our detachment. So without reading Bhagavatam, bhaktya bhina, aparada vakshaya, we're more liable to perform aparad and calm, crowd. Those things are constantly uh, be, uh, attacking us. So here the Sudarshan chakra is mentioned. Also, Prahlad Maharaj in his prayers, he's, first he says, Naham bibena chitate tibayana kasya. I'm not afraid of Narsingha Dev. He has his wedge ears. He, when he roars, the elephants are fleeing. Uh, and uh, he, he's garlanded by my father's intestines. <laughs> Antrasraja, Antrasraja. Shataja, Kesha, Sankukarna. I'm not afraid of that. But in the next verse, he says, Trastosmiham, I am afraid of this material energy, which is what this baby is suffering here. Or what Marsh Prickett was super fortunate, but babies, all babies are suffering like this. Trastosmiham, Kripanabhatsala, Dusha, Hogra. Um, so he says, Samsara Chakra Kadana Grasatam Panita. In several places, Prahlad Maharaj mentions being crushed by the wheel of time. Upakar Shivebo Pratana, Samsara Chakra. So this Sudarshan Chakra, it acts in this way to like chase sometimes that uh, Durbasha Muni, or you can, Krishna is cutting off the head of, what's his name? Vishwapal. Did Shalva get his head cut off too? I think so. So different people get their heads cut off uh, <laughs> by this Sudarshan Chakra. But the Sudarshan Chakra is the time factor. It's cutting everyone's head, whether it's our head, arm, leg, whole body. It, uh, it's described there in the fifth canto in the 14th chapter, the beginning in the forest of enjoyment, that this time factor, Sudarshan Chakra, no one can escape, even from the tiniest ant or blade of grass up to Lord Brahma, a Brahma Bhuvana Loka. Everyone is subjected to this Sudarshan Chakra. And here, in this case, Rikit Maharaj is being protected. But whether we're protected, uh, Rakobi and Marobi, Rakobi, Bhakti Manotako says, well, I am protected or you kill me, it doesn't matter. Ashray Loi Bhaji Krishna Tari Nahityaji, Bhakti Manotako says, one who has taken shelter of Krishna, Krishna doesn't give him up. Therefore, he's known here and mentioned here, Bhakta Vatsala. Affection, Vatsala means affectionate. Zatsalya Ras. So, uh, he's very affectionate to these Pandavas and thus also Parikit Maharaj. So, this is the kind of the beginning, actually beginning, when I came to the art department in 71, they gave me the painting to do, but I couldn't really do it. I did part of the painting, but was Parikit Maharaj in the Brahmastra, but I didn't have any detailed idea of anything. And uh, I think other artists had to help me finish it. Still, it's there in the old book. Uh, not because I finished it, but because others helped me. But, so, Maharaj Parikit in the womb, how he's being protected, it's inconceivable. Because So, Krishna gave up his own vow. This is also described a little while later in, uh, I think, in Bhishma's ninth chapter. Where he says, for Nigam, uh, he gave up his own vow to protect, to uh, not fight in the battle of Kurukshetra, and he was picked up the wheel, which the wheel represents also it's Krishna's chakra, to kill Bhishma Dev, and Bhishma Dev stood there ready to die, but he had this shivar, silver's ras with Krishna. And he's describing in his prayers as he's leaving his body about Krishna, one of those visions, one of his meditations is Krishna picking up the wheel, how Krishna looked like he was bleeding and full of dust, his hair all 
and his cloth falling off, and uh, he gave up his vow, just as it says here. He gave up his vow to protect Arjuna. So sometimes Krishna doesn't, Prabhupada said he's very tricky, therefore he tells Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita, you you declare it, because if I declare it, sometimes I don't follow strictly my vow, so you should, so Krishna gave up his vow. <clears throat> Here Prabhupada's citing Gita, the Lord has clearly promised his devotees are never to be vanquished. And he behaves according to the quality of degree by devotion. It's another point made by Prahlad Maharaj in his prayers that he says, um, ah, such amazing, ah, nobody fed the cat. <laughs> so, uh, in his prayer, another prayer, he says, Naisham paravaramatir bhavato nanusyaj. Prabhupada lectured on this verse. He lectured on many of Prahlad's prayers in Mayapur, especially in 1976. So in that particular verse, Prahlad Maharaj says that paravara, Krishna, twice it says that, Naisham paravaramatir bhavato nanusyaj. Janto suridol tadapi. He says, he doesn't mind, doesn't see, he's samadarshanam, he doesn't see higher or lower. Paravara, avara. Para means above or avara means lower. But according to the amount, the degree, the degree of seva, then Krishna interacts with the devotee. Uh, the exact word sevana rupa. Sevana rupa udeo na paravara tvam. Paravara. In the beginning of the verse, it says paravara, and at the end of the verse, very poetic, amazing verse. Sang sevaya suratoror. Suratoror means a desire tree of service. That is, if we want something off this desire tree of bhakti, then we have to do the service. But Prabhupada stresses there that one shouldn't be envious. If somebody is advanced, we should rejoice and be happy. And uh, one shouldn't be thinking, uh, this is not the devotional way to think. So that means he has done some seva, some strong, powerful seva. Some seva. Seva na rupa mudeo na para. So he's interacting on it. Prahlad Maharaj makes this strong point in his prayers. Um, so another point, let's see what else. Mm. Ananya Vishyatma Nam is significant. They were 100% dependent on the protection of the Lord. So Marsh Pariksit, he, um, he actually condemned himself that he deserved this curse. And even before Shukadeva Goswami uh, arrived on the scene, there were many sages. He was praising the sages, saying that now, because I've been so dependent in my life on hearing from you sages and saints. Now I've become benedicted by your association that I only have seven days to live. And due to my sinful reaction. So he wasn't thinking to counteract the curse later on, but he was thinking more that he deserved it, his punishment. So devotees believe that. Sushimikshimano, uh, that verse. Atma kritam vipakam. Vipaka means the fruits of one's sinful activity or his offensive mentality. So Marge Brickett is an emblem of that also. Although he's such a great king, everyone, all his whole throne was made of, the, he had uh, decorated with the crowns of other kings that he conquered. He was able to chastise uh, Kali, such a powerful king in so many ways as described. Still, he accepted this, this uh, curse. But this is his qualification, that he's being protected by the Sudarshan Chakra. Svastrena. Um, but this, um, described here, is a nuclear type of weapon. And of course, nowadays, they have smart bombs. They're also similar, but they also miss the target. So-called smart bombs put out by smart people that kill a lot of innocent people that drones and they cause all kinds of havoc. 
So apparently this, this weapon is very exacting. Um, in a couple of verses, it describes it as, uh, this shouldn't be considered so amazing in the activities of Krishna. Ascharyam, Ascharyavat, Bharatita Taiva Chanya. This is a leading up to the prayers of Queen Kunti, where she describes Krishna as Purusham Tvajam. Namashe Purusham Tvajam, that you are the supreme person. Alaksham Sarvabhutanam, you cannot be seen by any ordinary person. Any ordinary, uh, rather, Maya Javani Kachana Magyar Hoksha. For most everybody in the world, he's covered by this deluding energy of Maya. Maya Javani Kachana Agya, because they're Agya, ignorant, and the curtain is there, and also he is uh, inconceivable. Maya Javani Kachana Agyar Hoksha Maksha. Nalaksha say Mudha Dusha. They're Mudha, Mudha Dusha. So in so many ways we're hampered that we can't, but we have Bhagavatam, we have these pastimes to read, to meditate on. This is our saving grace. Sanatana Goswami describes the Srimad Bhagavatam as uh, Ekabandhu, our only friend, uh, my only friend, uh, my guru, mad guru, mad mahadana, my only wealth. So Srimad Bhagavatam is giving us these pastimes. Uh, Marsh Brickett, one of the great verses describing his, his mentality, uh, where, he, where he says, Ganga to Devi to Tachitamishe. Because the Ganga is the flowing river. They were sitting by the Ganga. The Ganga was, is so pure. So, Ganga to Devi to Tachitamishe. Uh, Please, may the, the Ganga, and I am sitting here. Fully surrendered uh, to all you vipras. Therefore, he says, Dashatvalam Gayata Vishnu Gata. Let this snake, Kuhakas Takshakova, this mysterious snake bird may bite me at any time, but I don't mind. If you continue to chant the glories of Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam, he's speaking with the sages, the vipras, but especially Shukadeva Goswami. Shukadeva. Goswami saved also Purikit from this bite of the material energy. That's given in the last, in the 12th canto. Um, he was sarpa by this snake. The, the, the snake bird was there, but also the snake represents this biting. The other day, uh, Chaita Guru was mowing my lawn. Not my lawn, actually, it was neighbor's lawn. Very, very high grass. So he killed about four snakes. Dangerous. He showed one, one moccasin. He put it out on the road. That snake was still twitching. Very dangerous thing. The body was still moving for two or three hours after the head was cut. So there's sometimes there's people find snakes and shoot them, kill them. Because, Modeta Sadra Pibhrishtika Sarpahatya. Prabhupada said he was surprised that Bhakti Santa Saraswati had a snake killed at the ashram when he was there one time visiting Bhakti Santa Saraswati. But then again, just after that, he opened the Bhagavatam and he, he read that verse by Prahlad Maharaj. Mode the Sahadra Pibhrishtika Sarva. The snake. So Maharaj Parikit is protected here only to be cursed again by this snake bird. Uh, and when he came out of the womb, Parikit, he was given the name immediately because he was always looking around. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? Whether they knew that he was looking for Krishna, I'm not sure, I don't know. But he was looking for Krishna there, or he's uh, examining or searching, looking, parikshaya. So in Bhaktivinoda Thakur's songs, he describes the predicament of the babies in the womb. Uh, in those days, there was no abortion. I'm not sure there was much abortion during Bhaktivinoda Thakur's time, but still he described, in summary, adarera chele sarjanera kole. Although, even a fortunate baby may be praying. Some atheist, some outside persons, they may be amazed. Oh, a baby is praying in the womb? No, why not? Why can't he? He can not only pray, he can remember his shatta janma. <clears throat> so many hundred births. Because he's so much afflicted by pain. He thinks, if I ever get out of here, I'm going to worship God. He may be not... In the case of some very fortunate baby, he may be like Parikit Maharaj, directly protected. 
But any baby is protected in the womb by Krishna, as Prabhupada describing, Kapila Dev is describing that. So, but after he comes out, Naholo uh, Gyana Laba, he doesn't have any memory of it. Even Bhaktivinoda Thakur is describing himself. Bulia, Tomari, Samsari, Asya, uh, Nana, Nana, huh? Pay Nana Vida, Gata. Pay Nana Vida. That in the womb, he's taking himself as an ordinary person. That Bulia, Tomari, I forgot you. I came into the samsara and I am beset with hundreds, hundreds, thousands of miseries. And then what's the next line? Therefore I come to your lotus feet. And uh, this is how he's thinking in the womb. But then, just after coming at Chalama Jakan, Janama Hoilo, isn't it? Shalama Jaka. He's describing being put in that womb. Prabhupada said, if you were put into a womb now, even if you had a big womb to get in and pushed in, you couldn't live even for a few moments. But the baby tolerates it. So Pariket Maharaj never lost that consciousness when he even came out of the womb. Uh, he was always thinking of Krishna, looking for Krishna. And then, of course, if you read the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, where uh, Prakrit Maharaj describing uh, the nectar of the Bhagavatam, you can understand how great that is. So, uh, now in Kali Yuga, the child is suffering so much, and then again he's aborted, killed in the womb. So, this is an unfortunate situation. But Prakrit Maharaj was very fortunate. Um, and he was getting the direct protection here. Here it says, there was no time for the Pandavas, although there were great warriors. Uh, Prabhupada says, the Lord neglects even the greatest warrior and vanquishes them in no time. As described in Bhagavad Gita uh, to Arjuna, Krishna was speaking, uh, Nimitta Matram, you're just an instrument. I've already killed all the Drona, Jayadra, Karna. They're all being killed. So just go ahead and do. Just act as my instrument because it's so. Ami Chatam Dhritarashtra Putra. All the sons of Dhritarashtra. They're all going in. Uh, described just like moss flying into a fire. Their heads are being crushed. Arjuna could see all that in his vision because he was given this transcendental vision. So all these great warriors are crushed except for the Pandit, except for the Pandit. Kalosmi Lokakshaya, Krishna says. I am time. Time I am, Lokakshaya Krit Prabhito. I've come to destroy. So he's destroy any warrior, any big, any Haranikashipu, just like a tiny insect. And Harinikashipu, any Kamsa, uh, any of those big, big demons destroyed within a moment. And even Kamsa, such a big shot, uh, Vasudev was preaching to him that, oh, Vira, you're such a great hero, but Ajavabda Ashatanti Cha, today or tomorrow, after a hundred years, you'll be killed. Uh, Praninam, uh, he says, every living entity like every other living entity. So why are you so fearful? You'll be killed. So we'll all be killed any moment. Kamala Dala Jala Jivana Talamana. So Prakat Maharaj gave up everything. Many kings we read about like Bharat, even in the prime of youth, they, uh, Malavad, Uttama Shloka. We had that word, uh, that was in the fourth canon yesterday somewhere. I was here. So <laughs> Lalasa, but hearing hearing the glories uh, as uh, described in the Bhagavatam, so many places. So in the second canto, um, which is actually the beginning of the Sukadeva Goswami's speaking, he describes that. Uh, so many warriors are there, but they're fallible soldiers, fallible so-called kings. And, but those who are griheshu griyamedinam, 
they try to take shelter of all these fallible soldiers. Uh, Marge Prickett is the greatest sadhu. He gave up. Even in the womb, he's protected. But when it was, came time, he would curse, he just took it. And uh, he gave up all attachments. Uh, and Evam Eitan Nagaditam Prishtavam Sukadeva Goswami told him in the second canto to Marj Purikit. As you asked me, Evam Eitan Nagaditam Prishtavam Yad Bhavan Mama, you asked me about what I should, I should do, what you should do at the time of death, because in the 19th chapter of the first canon, we'll get to that. Atak Prich Chami Sang Siddhim, please, he asked Sukadeva Goswami, tell me the goal, the ultimate perfection of my life. Atak Prich Chami Sang Siddhim, Yogi Nam Paramam Guru, you're the Supreme Guru. Everyone stood and offered respects to Sugadev, even the greatest sages when he came there. Everyone could see by his physiognomy. Ah, perfect person. What to speak of Maharaj Parikit. So therefore, Evam Etam, in the second canto, Parikit Maharaj says, you asked me, now I am told you so many things. And he continues to tell him after that. Evam Etam Negadidam Prishtavanyan, Rinam Yan Riyamana Nam Manusheshu, and anyone on the threshold of death, Prabhupada describes it, Prabhupada was giving the lecture in L.A. and he said, is anyone here can say that he's not on the threshold of death? Threshold of death is like, you know, when you're standing in the threshold. So you can go either way. So. But any moment you'll go through the threshold. You're, the door is there. So we're at the door of death, more or less. So this is what Prakam Raj, he maintained this consciousness throughout his life. So his example is perfect. And we're meant for following Haribo. Any discussions? I have two questions. One was not a question, but I read how Marsh Prickett and Chitraketu too, even though they were cursed, Prophet said they had the Tejas, they had the power to counteract the curse, you know, they, but they didn't do it. They just accepted it as Krishna's arrangement. Naki Korvanti, that's that verse where it says, when uh, ah, Samika Rishi was glorifying Kurikin Raj, saying he doesn't counteract the curse. That's pretty amazing. And the other thing was um, remembering a hundred births, you know, when you're in the womb. Like sometimes you'll read about uh, some boy, who, young boy, born, born into a family, and he's talking about uh, an airplane crash and the person that was with him, and his parents are like bewildered, right? They're, what is he talking about? And then they look it up, they find, yeah, actually, he talks about being an airplane crash and what kind of plane it was and where it was and all of that. So they, they do the research and they find, yeah, this is all true. So. I and mean, that's like one, he remembered his previous birth. But are there records of people, like remembering Records birth? of people? That's a record you just gave, right? I know, but more than one birth? More than yeah, they have birth? sometimes two or three. They can, sometimes they can check it. Yeah, there was that guy in uh, Virginia, Stephen, uh, what was his name? Uh, Stevenson, Ian Stevenson. He did a big research, and Sadapur used to cite his research. And um, they would sometimes have several births they could remember. Um, and they would try to research it as far as possible. But that's different than baby in the womb, 100 births. And you're suffering so much because there's gastrointestinal fire and there's all kinds of excretions. Probably describes it in detail, you know. It's quite bloody and amazing um, things going on in there, you know. It's not exactly very pleasant, so people forget that this birth is horrible. They just come out, oh, everything's not. Adarera chali swajanira kole, hasia katainu kao. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, I'm smiling, very nice, uh, and I'm being petted by my parents. I, you might have just been thinking about those hundred births when you come out, and everyone is holding you and smiling, and everything's okay. Forget, and he forgot a he doesn't have one trace of remembrance of it. Even so, 
Prickett Maharaj, he also may have not been focusing, but he knew he saw Vishnu, whatever. So, and evam uh, suchipte sotayiva siddha. Because Krishna is there in the heart, hidyantasto uh, vadrani. He gives the even the infant in the womb this memory. Apohanamcha, uh, or he gives forgetfulness. Evam so uh, Sukadev, he gives a verse in the Bhagavatam second canon. Evam suchite evas siddha. That perfect person. So he saw that form of Krishna in the womb. Bhagavan uh, Ananta, unlimited. And. Uh, Another verse by Sukadev. Just imagine you get protected by Vishnu, then you get cursed, and then you get the association of Sukadev Goswami. And you hear the whole Bhagavatam, and he's so much enlivened that he doesn't eat or drink. Prayapavishta Gangayam. He's fasting for seven days, no, not even drinking, but. Always oh, very attentive. And then he's hearing the whole fifth cano about the hells. <laughs> he's hearing about the baby in the womb. He's hearing all these things. And he's not even wanting a drop to drink. Anything else? Um, I was thinking about Shukadev Goswami. You know, he, he must have been having a different experience because he didn't want to come out of the womb. Yeah, he didn't want to come out. And he was he afraid of, of what's out there, and he wanted to stay in there. Yeah, Sukadeva Goswami, that probably gives that example later on in Bhagavatam, how Sukadeva, uh, it is said that Sukadeva didn't come out of the womb. He, but when he heard that, um, later on he came out, and he, he still didn't want to have anything to do with anybody, and he heard the Bhagavatam verses, then he came back, or so... Uh, Hobakyam stanakalakutam barhabitam. He heard these different verses from the Bhagavatam. He was lured back. And then again, somehow he knew about Marsh Prickett. Of course, he was. We don't know how, but he, he, he finds out. Yes, somebody else? Hand is up. I was just wondering if my understanding is correct that um, Shukadeva Swami was like impersonalist, right? So he, they are, um, they are afraid of Maya, but for a devotee, we hear that like pure devotee doesn't care whether he goes to hell. So it seems like a pure devotee wouldn't be really concerned about whether he has to take, he or she has to take another birth or not, because they're so absorbed in thought of Krishna that they don't mind any conditions of, is that, is that but, correct? But it's stressed in some of these purports that Marsh Pariket was destined to go back to the spiritual world. And uh, yeah, he doesn't, uh, it, that's given by the gopis or Rukmini, I will take a hundred births. She also says I will take a hundred births if I could get the association of Krishna. In a letter, Shatta Janma B and um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving also the example in his Sikshastakam. Ashlishya bhapa dararam panashtramama darshmana tankarota bhaitata tabhavada pampadamat pananatas. You remain my lord, even if you push me down anywhere, it doesn't matter. This is very also high level, which we can, you know, whichever we can meditate on, we can meditate on that mood. Pallad Maharaj is saying also in his prayer that. Um, I don't want to go naivod vijay paradurt vaitaranya tadbiri gainama because I'm so absorbed in the gaina chanting of the glories, the Bhagavatam, the holy name, that I don't have any anxiety at all, whether I'm in the Svarga Pavarga, whether in heaven or hell. That mood is there. But uh so chaita tovi mukha chaita sa. So this is Prabhupada's mood. Uh, I am lamenting for those who uh, turn their face away from Krishna. They're caught in Maya. They're taking the pleasure of Maya. But they're that's a very high position. 
coming to display the five adult ponderables? Oh, no, I didn't say that, did he? Yeah, I read it. What is he coming? I'm sure he would like to destroy the five Pandavas also. Yeah, I think it's mentioned. Well, he didn't get a chance to. <laughs> it's funny that Ashutama got a chance just recently. They cut his jewel, but he didn't become very humble, it doesn't. He's, <laughs> he's still very vicious with his weaponry. Therefore, Krishna says in the 16th chapter, there's such demoniac persons, uh, I put them again and again in uh, different demoniac species. Aswatthama might have gotten special benediction, but most persons, they, they may never see the light of day performing abortions. They become aborted. <clears throat> this is a... Anything else? No, no other questions. Okay. I was thinking like Ashwatthama will stay alive till end of Kali Yuga. So maybe he's in America, Alachua, who knows? <laughs> I mean, he's alive. He'll sustain till end of Kali Yuga. Yeah, we don't know. Himalayas. Huh? I thought he was in the Himalayas. You he thought he was Maya? what? Oh, maybe Himalayan mountain? Oh, we don't know. It didn't say exactly where he lives. He's traveling, the, wandering the world. So I was wondering, maybe he's in Alachua listening to all this criticism about him. Um, I'm, cause, I'm sure wherever he is, he's causing trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Haribo, nothing else. Jai Shima Bhagavatam.